Let's talk about spirits, shall we? Lots of people wouldn't like to speak about spirits. They wouldn't like to consider that this dimension that we are in is entirely given to spirits. And in actual fact, there isn't any human beings here. There is just a conglomerate of spirits. And so, when we look at what the world has served us up throughout millennia, they have served us up mythology in relation to spirits. They have served us up religions in relation to spirits. The Bible is full of spirits. Uh, the variety of spirit that came down from somewhere onto earth, i.e. the spirit of Satan, then other spirits um, like, I don't know, the Archons that came down and copulated with humans and then gave rise to the giants, the Nephilim. Throughout mythology, and you could even say history, there's a whole plethora of these encounters. And in my life, I've encountered many spirits, and many different, different forms and circumstances. And the variety of um, video and book that I read, there is much speak of spirits. And more and more, that's kind of unfortunate. More and more, everyday people are speaking openly about spirits and if any of you guys are familiar with Joe Dispenza then he speaks about 16 foot spirits which are visible to him at some of his shows and um, he said that, you know, they've been around and with him for a long time. And so, there's a whole many regions and realms where these spirits dwell and can be encountered. And last night I was watching a video about Rudolf Steiner's work. And he's a very esoteric uh, sort of guy, or was, long since dead now who wrote about the manifestation of spirits coming from other star constellations, planets, and on the sun. And y y you listen to this stuff off the bat, and you think it's just wacky and crazy and just stupid. Um, if you haven't had any spiritual encounters, and if you haven't been initiated into these sort of realms, and how you could become acquainted with spirits. And so listen to people like that. And many more people these days, when they are nothing like as esoteric as Rudolf Steiner, they speak about how we can encounter spirits on a daily basis. And so it's those spirits that I'm going to be speaking about. This is the closest I'll get to Serbia crossing this road. Which of course is a horrible, horrible affair. And the sooner they have forced 90% of the roads a cars off the road, in my estimation, the better. And as soon as they have forced upon us electric 
cars and electric strimmers, for God's sake. You can't go anywhere without having this nasty scourge of the human, what do you say, of the world. Just always something, making noise. These mechanical things have been a thorn in my side ever since their creation. The leaf blowers and the chainsaws and the skill saws and the hedge trimmers and anything that's, um, you know, a petrol engine. It's just completely unnecessary. And so there are forces on this planet that want to rid the world of those. And uh, I'm all for them. I'm in their camp and I'm in the greatest of support. And if they said that as from next week we are taking all cars off the road, that's it, period, then nobody would be more happy than me. Ah, oh dear. And so the world is heading in the right direction. Uh, we're heading for mass culling uh, and we're heading for um, a mass influx of robots uh, to be taking uh, the positions of noisy, resource-using pink apes. Um, you know, I was having a conversation um, about an hour ago with somebody and speaking about um, their partner and their partner doesn't have any dialogue, monologue or uh, internal dialogue or internal monologue doesn't uh, see anything uh, like I don't so aphantasiastic um, so, you could say there's nothing in this person's mind. It doesn't see anything, doesn't think anything. And when you look at how they operate, how they operate is like this. Someone will suggest something to them and they'll say yes or no. And they will watch something on the TV and someone will say, oh, there's a cool show uh, which follows this one. And they'll go, okay, I'll watch that. If the TV breaks down, then they'll just look into midair for as long as it takes uh, before they pick up the phone and start looking into the phone. Um, and then if someone says, you're coming down the pub, oh, that sounds like a good idea, I'll go down the pub. And they live their lives like this, uh, which is basically on the hypnosis, um, just being subject to suggestion. They can't think for themselves, should I, shouldn't I, will I, won't I, what am I going to do with my life? They don't think about anything like that. They just operate uh, from an external resource. And so whether that's their phone or whether it's their TV or computer or mates, this and the other, uh, their world is governed by whatever the external sources are saying or suggesting. And, you know, when we start to think and contemplate uh, how people for some time have been speaking about non-playing characters, some people, you know, they have an issue with that. Oh, that's cruel. Oh, that's stupid. Oh, that's not correct. Well, you know, all those things are wrong. Uh, there are many non-playing characters here which don't think for themselves at all. They are complete automaton. And, you know, they, they are useful automaton people because I've spoken about in, you know, many other videos. These people make our phones, they make our shirts, they make our rucksacks, they make everything. There is some automated pink ape somewhere laboring in sweatshops making all this stuff and if you are anything like me well you won't make a single thing only you'll get the blessings of all of those things and so i look at that and i'm like you know i've got a thing metaphysical about these people i really have here's me haven't done a single thing in the past 14 years by way of production and yet I've been catered to second to none. Every single thing I've ever wanted, then it's just at the, the touch of a few buttons on the computer 
tap, 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 and then as if by magic, an automated drone will deliver it to my door in a day or two after. And so I ask myself, well, what's going on here? Why is it that I can live this variety of life whereby I don't even never need to see any money? I just use the facility of a piece of plastic. Go and buy goods, plastic, plastic, plastic. That's it. Go to the cash, till, service, machine, whatever. Put in a few numbers. Just get some paper out now and again. If you need to give paper instead of plastic. Paper and plastic, people. It's paper and plastic. And, you know, when you look at how hard many, many people labour. Oh, for fuck's sake. A bit of thorn in the fucking sand. How hard people labour. For what? Oh, so they can put a roof over their head. So they can put food in their mouth. So they can put clothes on their backs. Wow. Well, that's a life. Way to go. You've really got a breast of things. And then, of course, there's other people that, um, you know, just by comparison, you know, work probably no more hard, and they earn millions. So you've got all these so-called human beings performing different tasks and getting paid varying levels. So many varying levels. <coughs> for the labour and so you know it's very very peculiar isn't it when you become a little bit philosophical about the human being and you ask yourselves well where do I fit into all this I mean doubtless nobody watching this works in a sweatshop because you wouldn't have time but there's millions of people that do do this in India and Asia and all different sorts of um, countries like that whereby their spirits are partaking in much less fortunate human experiences. So on one hand you have someone like me who's just been talking into a camera for the past 14 years and getting every single thing that I've ever wanted paid for. And, um, you know, and it's only due to the advent of COVID that I'm walking around without a front tooth because the government has spent so much money in relation to that that they're almost broke. So they've got to make some concessions. But it wasn't until recently that they stopped uh, giving that away to what they were considered to be their slaves and I remember that um, the policy was that they would give you a free tooth for the first four top and bottom so any of those and there they would give you free dental work because they wanted you to be presentable to go to get further employment they weren't bothered if you got any at the back which couldn't be seen it was just the ones that were going to be making you look a little bit iffy. And so, only in very recent times has that been taken away, but I shouldn't think it would be too long before it's come back again. Because by the time uh, society, um, there's a good portion of society walking around, uh, young, you know, people can get the teeth knocked out at a very young age. Um, but the, the dentists want, want three and a half thousand pounds a tooth, people when you can buy a very nice car for 500 pounds and so something is very very wrong with all of that oh for for fuck's sake right now and so you know you know swings and roundabouts things have a habit of disappearing and then making manifest again and so what i'm saying anyway in this video how we have spirits guiding us 
working through us. And in my book, I write quite extensively about what I've discovered about spirits in my life. And one of the things that I'm speaking about is that if we consider our minds to be a house, uh, then all of our thoughts derive from spirits. Because if you ask yourselves, for those of us that have uh, internal monologues or dialogues, then we have more spirits dwelling within us. If you have an empty head uh, with no thoughts, then there are no spirits there. That's why these people are husks. They are non-spirited. They are non-plain characters, people. Because you have to have a monologue, at the very least, or a dialogue, uh, which is a, a, an indication that you actually think. Because if you can't give reasons as to why you're doing something, then of course, whatever you're doing isn't because you've thought about it and you've chosen a certain activity. It's just something you're doing automatically. And so, there are many, many people, they're not even people, you know, that's just a, a, a very, it's a misnomer, a very loose term. It's like homo sapiens, human being. What the fuck's a human being? What the fuck's a homo sapiens? Homo sapiens means wise hominid. Uh, how many do we know that are wise? I, you know, can count them all on one hand, I guess. And I've never met too many of them in my life, to be fair. I've met a great number of automated drones and when we're growing up, when we're younger we can be forgiven for thinking that everybody is pretty well the same they've got different upbringing, different characters but their facility uh, for experiencing the world is very similar well what I've discovered in, you know recent, not too recent times is that that's completely erroneous that never has been true uh, there are people that seem to be conscious but in actual fact are unconscious they seem to be thinking and making choices when in actual fact they are not and if you listen to people like Sam Harris then they will tell you that there is absolutely no free will Everything most people do is automated, or, 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 automated, or automated, um, premised on what they've done prior, or premised on whatever the chemicals in their body are telling them to do. But for those of us who are more evolved, we carry spirits, and the more evolved you are, the more spirits you carry. And for a long, long time, I've known that I have many spirits and I felt them, I've been aware of them and I've considered most of them to be very useful some of them to be very detrimental and we have to know how to deal with the ones that are detrimental because if we deny that we are a bunch of spirits and it's just thoughts and thoughts and nothing and you know, you don't look at what is moving you as a human being. We're being moved, people. You know, you've heard the term the unmoved mover. God, spirit, moving people in a certain way. Well, of course, we can apply that to the opposite then, can't we? Satan, the unmovable mover. Um, and so, a whole other collection of spirits. Now, for instance, if we are very um, driven in certain realms for power, um, for the acquisition of sex, um, or we just need a whole bunch, an array of things satiating, we have to ask ourselves, what is it that actually needs satiating? For instance, if you get a voice in your head telling you to go and buy chocolate, who is saying that? 
if you have another voice say, no, I've eaten too much, who is saying that? If you don't ever think about going to buy some chocolate, you just find yourself in the shop buying chocolate, then you, well, there's nothing to ask any questions, is there? You can't say, who am I standing in the shop buying chocolate? Did I choose to do this? If I look at my body, is that a good idea? No. And that's why you look around and you see these grossly fat people. And I've often said throughout my life, at what stage in their life have they said to themselves, enough is fucking enough already. You look down and you can't see your dick or pussy. In actual fact, you don't remember ever seeing it since you're maybe about six years old because you've been such a fat fuck in all those years. Well, where's the agency inside which says to the other agency, hey, what are we gonna do about this fat fuck? Are we gonna just fucking let him have it, or her, tell him what for, tell him they're a fat, grotesque, stinky, sweaty fuck, and they make people's eyes sore when they look at them. You know, and it can't be a lot of fun, because you can't fuck, you, you can't run or play fucking tennis. What the fuck can you do? You can't do nothing. But you see, these people, they don't have spirits they are just fucking machines and so these questions are never posed to themselves and if anybody ever says anything to them it doesn't register because there's nothing to register it and so this video I suppose more than anything is an opportunity for you to just start to think a little bit more what's going on here because there's so many hominids uh, walking around which don't have fucking brains, they don't have spirits, they don't have internal monologues or dialogues, they don't actually ever have a single thought of their own. Anything they do is just as a result of the chemicals in their body or their external um, movements and machinations. But when you do think, and when you do have uh, at least a monologue, let's say, I think all you know, reasonably thinking people, they have to have a dialogue. They just have to, because you have to ask yourself questions. You have to go, do I wanna go to the gym? And like, another part of me says, no really, I don't wanna go. I went yesterday, I didn't like it. Can't be bothered, to be fair. And then the other one says, well, what are you going to do then? Spend all day indoors. You'll get agitated. And then the other one goes, hmm, yeah, there is that. And then you say to yourselves, well, shall we go to the gym then? And then you go, yeah, fuck it, let's go. And so who's saying these things? Who's taking the body to the gym to give it this experience? Who benefits from that? The spirits that are engaging with us, the spirits that are sharing this experience. Let's just say I've got a spirit which really, really enjoys a thriving human body. That spirit is very, very motivated to take this body to the gym. And if that spirit gets compromised by the lazy fuck, well, there's something going to be said. And in my life, the powerful spirit is the one that does the right thing. The negative spirits are never around that long. They are always invariably rode out of town. And they could be any spirit that leads you into vices overindulgence in lots of things and indulgence in things that you really shouldn't be and uh, so I've had an acquaintance with many of those in my life which have enjoyed being very overindulgent with a lot of things until I had to clean up shop and so spirit the overall 
authority here seems that there is one overall authority and there's many subservient because spirits are like drones they're required you see I require someone to make this phone to make this selfie stick to make the shirt on my back and so the spirit that is having this main human experience needs to engage in other spirits to give them an, an addition or another facet to what is going on like a sex spirit uh, a drug spirit an alcohol spirit an adventure spirit a mischievous spirit um, a musical spirit just spirit spirit spirits people it seems like they're all out there and they're all waiting for an invite or an opportunity to step inside now lots of spirits if we are not aware of this they will enter into our house um, without us having any real awareness for instance if you decide that you can have a drink and then you kind of like having a drink and then it gets into a bit of a habit whereby every day you have been one or two uh, and then after a few months or years it turns into five and six well, there's a spirit that's come in the back door. Uh, and why do you think spirits are called spirits? Because they come with baggage, people. And so, when a spirit has worked its way in, at some stage, if you are a real human being, then you're gonna have an awareness of this, and you're gonna go, oh fuck, there's something living within me that I no longer want a relationship with and then you have to say to yourself what am I going to do about it and you say well going to have to evict this motherfucker going to have to try and compromise with them to begin with going to have to say hey drinking spirit can't go on mate it can't go on mate because if it goes on and on for much longer then you'll kill this body and then you won't have a host anymore. So it makes sense to stop, doesn't it? So curb it. And get things into moderation. And then the other spirits go, yeah, because I want to do some fucking exercise, motherfucker. I don't want you fucking dragging my fat, fat fucking feck ass around. And so I'm going to get this fucking body ship shape. And we've got all this stuff going on. We've got the guy or the gal inside, the spirit that wants to eat cakes and sweets and chocolate. We've got the one that wants to drink and smoke and do drugs and just fucking be a lazy feck on the fucking couch and never do anything. There's a whole bunch of spirits, people. And once you have an awareness of this, then you can start to narrow things down. You can hone in on who's doing what, who exactly is responsible for what. And then you can evict them. So in my book, I speak about my body, my mind being a home, and it becoming vacant, uh, a free house, uh, because there was nobody uh, who cared too much for it. Nobody was meticulously cleaning it and um, you know, decorating it and making sure that everything's nice. And so what happens when you have a free house? You get people that just come and stay and don't end up leaving, right? How many people have had friends like that? Oh, can I come and stay, spend the night? I spit all with my missus. And then one night turns into seven and then you have to go, well, you know, where are you, where are you going then? Oh, I don't know. I fucking, I got no money, I, you know, I need to stay, can I stay a little bit longer, mate? That's never happened with me, by the way, because I would never have, a, have that happen. Uh, ain't no squatters coming to fucking surf on my couch. I'll put a tent up in the fucking garden for them, And I'll go, when you, you think that isn't good enough for you, then you go and find somewhere better, yeah. But if you come into my home, into my level of perfection, oh, you'll want to stay fucking ever, won't you? No, can't do it can't do that to you gotta help you to help yourself so when we have an open house lots of other people lots of entities come in 
and then you got the drug dealer. For instance, here's a classic example. I once rented a room in this house, and it was a nine-room house, nine bedrooms. And one of the rooms was given to a crack cocaine dealer, another one was a heroin addict, another one was an incessant weed-smoking uh, lesbian, uh, another one was uh, some very very peculiar uh, immigrant came from Bulgaria just to earn money uh, so he could take it back to his home country uh, to look after his family he had a wife and, and kids uh, so he used to pack chickens in the factory for 12 or 14 hours a day every single day and so there's all these different sorts of characters living in this house and uh, none of them uh, took it upon themselves to be the cleaner or the governor and so everybody who treated the kitchen uh, like it was just a, a, a dump and uh, they'd eat pizza and fucking just leave the boxes all over the place whatever pots and pans uh, they'd use them until there was nothing left and then there was no clean utensils in the kitchen it was an absolute hellhole and um, the landlord, who was my friend, I said to him, I said, you know what's happening to your fucking house, mate? Have you seen? When's the last time you came? And he said, yeah, geez, I haven't been able to get over to last few months. I've been busy. And I'm like, well, you better get over and have a look what's fucking going on. And so he came over, and then he decided that he's going to start giving people notice. So that's what we have to do. We have to give our unwanted squatters notice. The disorderly one the gluttony one, the lazy one, the noisy one, the disrespectful one, the drug-taking one, the alcoholic one, on and on and on, the sex addict one, every one of them has to go. And what do you do when you get rid of these fuckers, which ain't easy, it takes a long time, some of them, it takes years. And so I don't know how many years it's took me, but I've been on this path now 14 years. And I consider that I'm pretty accomplished now. And I have my house in order. But we can never get too complacent because there is always times when if you aren't concentrating uh, wholeheartedly, then someone will bring a friend home one night and they'll end up shacking up in their room and then things will start to change. And so in recent times, what's happened with myself? Well, there's a restless one that's all of a sudden took up lodgings. And I'm like, where the fuck have you come from? This restless one doesn't allow me to meditate. It causes me to be confused with my life. It says to me, shouldn't you be doing something? Shouldn't you be traveling the world? shouldn't be achieving something. How old are you? You're only 60 years old. You must have another 10 years left. What are you going to do with yourself? Are you going to accomplish anything? Or is that it? Are you just going to walk around these same little fucking rat bones for the rest of your life? And I'm like, hey, hey, hey. I've been around the world fucking 20 times. I've done my fucking adventure and travelling shit. I'm chilling the fuck out now, motherfucker. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, just saying, because it doesn't look like, you know, you're having the greatest time. You know, to be fair, I mean, how many times can you go to the gym a day? How much meditating can you do? How much reading can you do? You know, there's a lot more to life, you know. Yeah, so I've got that dude that showed up. When I was on Kratom, that dude wasn't there. When I was on Kratom, I could meditate all day long. And I never had a thought about achieving anything uh, for the rest of my life. Isn't that curious? Being in that level of contentment, people, I didn't want for anything. And I thought, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy just to walk up and down these, you know, noisy fucking paths uh, for the rest of my life. But now, uh, there's a state of awareness, uh, an agitation, and it's saying to me, are you sure you want to walk up and down these noisy fucking paths? Aren't you sick of this shit? And I'm like, I am fucking sick of it. Yes. I'm sick of this fucking shit. There's a motorway just down here, is it? No, dual carriageway, three lane on. Uh, so it's six lanes in total, so it's noisy. And, you know, you, you can't go anywhere in suburbia where you're going to get peace. When I was living down the Algarve, I lived in a tiny little town, 
uh, which was given to uh, walkways so there was no traffic in the streets and um, you know I was 60 seconds from the most beautiful beach on the planet probably an absolute stunning uh, character given beach these beautiful sand cliffs in the Algarve so I enjoyed that for three years uh, and now I'm restless and I want to go back and I don't want to listen to this bullshit and I don't want to smell the fumes and I don't want to listen to the leaf blowers and the fucking swimmers and all that so this character that's come around now Mr Restless I'm like well usually most things happen in my life for a reason and so now I'm being presented with well you've got 10 years of you know pretty good energy and um, you know maybe more but you know at least 10 years till you're 70 if you know you keep yourself in shape and um, what are you going to do with it and I'm like well you know yeah good point uh, because to be fair I'm getting a little bit restless around here and um, so there's that facet and um, then another facet is kind of like whereby I'm becoming more and more disinterested um, in the human being. I'm like, yeah, well, what am I going to do in the world? It's all very well and good saying, you know, you want to go out into the world and you want to achieve something, but that's going to entail mixing with those fucking idiots. Well, you know you've got to search high and low to find one that can fucking think. So, what the fuck are you going to do, dude? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. You know, I need to join a club of the super elite, thinking intelligent people, real, real homo sapiens, wise hominids, because the rest of them, they ain't homo sapiens. They may be humans, whatever that means. Human. They have a hue of a man. They have a loose semblance to a man. You see, you look into the, the etymology of these things, people. And so I'm like, well, fucking hell, I'll be traumatised if I've got to go back out into that shit fucking fest. What the fuck am I going to do out there? When I was younger, I had some sort of level of acceptance and um, intrigue about meeting new people. But I've met too many now. I've really met too many. And uh, the vast majority of them have been highly disappointing. And so why would I want to put myself through that shit? I can't see any reason, to be fair. So then I say to myself, well, there's another one that's coming now, another one that's sharing your home. And that's Mr. Confusement. And like, you know, this guy, he's a bit confused about things. You know, because it's kind of like, what the fuck? You know, if I do this and I've got to do that, and if I don't do this and I can't do that, and then you've got all this stuff going on. And I'm like, oh my God. I, I watch people on the, you know, YouTube, and I see people interviewing people endlessly all around the world. And I go, how the fuck do they do that? How the fuck do they do it? Where do they find the energy or the inclination in this fucking shit fest? Getting on planes, trains and automobiles and staying in hotels and eating shit food in fucking naff restaurants. And oh my god, all of that. And okay, you got loads of money. What are you going to do with it? Buy a bigger house and a bigger car. Who gives a fuck? You can only sit at one fucking chair, one computer, can't you? You can only stand at one fucking cooker. I just don't get it, people. I don't get it. So anyway, that's my rant. The fucking kids are out from school now, so uh, I'm going to put the phone away and just uh, get to the gym.